Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players to Nicomenda build their starting rosters and learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on this episode we will be discussing a criminal alliance with the Psy Syndica. We will discuss their strengths, their weaknesses, their fighters, their playstyle, and provide critical information that you can use in your campaigns. So that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the positive as well as negative impacts of making a criminal alliance with the Psy Syndica. All right, so first of all, let's go on and talk about the positive impact of making a criminal alliance in your campaigns of Nicomunda, especially when you make a criminal alliance with the Psy Syndica. First of all, you have a special rule that's called a band apart. With this special rule, it pretty much gives you all the benefits of taking extra fighters in your gang without any of the negatives for taking those fighters. At the same time, you also have bodyguards within each of the syndicates, and these actually help keep the leader of your criminal alliance from harm, which makes them pretty good for getting things done on the battlefield, as well as maintaining a healthy relationship with your criminal alliance. At the same way, make Making an alliance with a criminal organization in this setting is a good way to balance out numbers in a scenario. The reason why is because these fighters don't take up any of your crew slots, so bringing experienced fighters with better equipment without impacting your crews is always a benefit. So now that we're done talking about the positive, let's go ahead and talk about the negative aspects of this. Now, on the other hand, there are some negative impacts on your campaign play if you make an alliance with the Psy Syndica. First and foremost, you must be an outlaw gang in order to make a criminal alliance. So if you're using a campaign, say, that uses law-abiding as well as outlaw game mechanics in your campaign, you must be an outlaw gang, which is not such a great problem, especially if you're redemptionists or if you happen to be a great cult grinder cult because you always have the outlaw status. But if you're a law-abiding gang, it could impact your chances as well as impact your campaign play to become an outlaw to make this. Not to mention, your alliance with the Psy Syndica can easily be broken as well with guard duty ties as well as drawbacks. Guard duties are the type of kind of thing that game mechanic that kind of limits your type of scenarios you can play as you have to basically support the uh, syndicate that you're helping out. It also can be ties that cut into your resources like money or res other resources that you also have. In some cases, your drawbacks you haven't have a simplest implication for your games because it might actually hurt your individual fighters. So whatever you do make an alliance, you may need to take a look at the positive and the negative aspects of making that alliance and see which one outweighs the other whether the risk is worth the reward and make a decision for yourself. So let's go and talk about the strategic as well as the tactical assets that the Psy Syndica bring to your gang in your campaign. So when it talks about when it comes up to tactical assets, what we're talking about, we're talking about game mechanics that affect individuals or combat on the battlefield. So these are things that are actually going to affect your individual games of Nicomunda on the tabletop. Meanwhile, strategic assets are game mechanics that impact a game during the course of a campaign. So whether this is getting you additional territory, additional reputation, or income, these are things that affect you primarily in the pre as well as the post game setup, and at the same time also have some pretty, you know, big impact for your game in terms of getting the resources that you might need as well. Now when when it comes to the strategic assets of the Science Syndica, the Science Syndica is a very poor strategic choice. And the reason why is because while it does give you a random psychic power for one of your fighters, you do have to randomly roll for that power, you could end up with a really bad one at the same time. So because of that, not a very good strategic asset as well. At the same time, if you break the alliance whatsoever with the Psy Syndica, you have to pay for that with one of your fighter's lives. That fighter does get deleted off your roster. Now, you do get their uh, wealth in terms of credits from that fighter being deleted off your roster, but you can still lose a fighter if you break the alliance. And given how easily it is to break alliances in this game, it's kind of a bad uh, drawback from having that as well. Also, now when it comes to his tactical assets, the Psy Syndica is a fair choice because you get the Mind Locked Weird to help you in a fight, and they actually have really good access to psychic powers. But that's really about it. In fact, when we actually talk about some of the benefits as well as the negatives on this one, it doesn't seem very beneficial for you to actually consider making a uh, alliance with the Psy Syndica. So let's go ahead and talk about those benefits real quick. So the first benefit you get is what's called Psychic Waiting. What you basically do is you choose a fighter and you generate a random psychic power for that fighter. Now, while that might sound like a good idea, at first there are some serious drawbacks. For one, you have to randomly roll for the power and you might get a really lame one. So that's one of the problems that you actually have to worry about. And the second thing, if you break this alliance, the fighter that you've given the psychic power to, they die. And that person's fighter is uh, fighter is deleted from your guy's roster. At the same time, the value, you do get that in the credits for your for your gang. But at the same time, though, it could be a really bad choice because what if it's a good fighter that you want to give the psychic power to? And at the same time, you don't want to give the psychic ability off to some random fighter because that's not what the ability is, should be used for. So because of that, this is actually a really hard choice to make as a player, rather to whether you want to actually have this. Now, granted, psychic is psychic abilities are actually becoming more prevalent now in campaigns of Necromunda, so that is a consideration you got to worry about. But at the same time, though, 
is it really worth the benefit? And that's the thing you want to look about, especially when we get to the drawbacks. So probably there are two drawbacks you got to worry about when making an alliance with the Science Syndicate. The first one's called Dark Dreams, which means that one randomly fighter must pass a willpower test. Otherwise, if that fighter doesn't pass the willpower test, they can't participate in the battle. As represented that the corruptive nature of the psychic abilities of the Science Syndicate are actually affecting your fighters in that case. At the same time, you know that a drawback called secondary attention, which means that after the battle, roll a d6 plus one for each unsanctioned psyker in your gang. And on a roll of seven plus, one randomly selected fire must roll on the lasting injuries chart. Now you can't ignore this, but of course this will also test the alliance. So not only that, you're gonna already have two unsanctioned psychers in your gang, just right off the bat, because you got the mind locked weird that's with your gang. That's one of the benefits you get from this, if it's truly a benefit at all. And then of course you also have the randomly selected fire, the, the fighter that you choose to get the second ability to so right off the bat you already have a two on that value okay so all they have to basically do is roll a five or higher and bet i was not a five or higher a four or higher which is a 50 50 chance and you're going to end up getting this uh negative benefit so because of that your fighters could actually get some serious injuries they could possibly die they can go to recovery miss out in a battle report or they can get an injury that also permanently deletes uh deletes a point off one of their stats as well and also go to recovery which means that if you have a really bad series of rolls for your drawbacks when combined with your dark dreams as well as your psychonarium attention um you could potentially have two fighters in your roster that will not be able to participate in the battle report and of course that could also happen too if you decide to break the alliance you could actually potentially have up to three fighters that can't participate so because of that, the serious drawbacks that this alliance actually brings kind of outweighs the benefit. Now, of course, to do some fair diligence, we are going to talk about the mind locked weird that you get. So let's go ahead and talk about that fighter next. All right, so when it comes to the mind locked weird, uh, this is the actual one fighter you get from the criminal lines of the Psy Syndica. So let's talk about the stats real quick. The mind locked weird has a four inch movement allowance, it's got a five plus weapon skill, three plus ballista skill. 3 Strength, 3 Toughness, they also have 2 Wounds, they have a 4 plus Initiative as well as 1 Attack, they have 8 plus for Leadership, 6 plus for Cool, 4 plus for Willpower, as well as 9 plus for Intelligence. So they got some pretty mediocre stats, all things considered. Now the Mind Locked Rear does come with Mesh Armor, so that does help them out with a little bit of the defense. And they also have the Fearsome Skill, which is standard, which could be good because it means they also get less likely to get charged against in close combat. But here's the thing that's cool about the mind locked, mind locked Weird. You can actually get three psychic abilities of your choice, which means you could actually choose what psychic abilities to give the psyker to use in your next battle, which is extremely helpful for the mission and the opponent you'll be facing. So if you know what kind of scenario you're going against, as well as what kind of enemy you'll be fighting against, you can pick three, a cherry pick three psychic abilities that will really help you out to do well in that scenario, given whatever, you know, mission extenuating circumstances you might run into in the scenario as well so that part's kind of nice at the same time you also have a four up willpower which is really really good which is what you want for the psychers that way you can help spam those psychic powers on the battlefield because that's the only real benefit that this mind locked word actually brings is that they bring those psychic abilities as well now granted there's some serious drawbacks to that but we'll talk about that when we talk about our overall conclusion of this alliance so in conclusion, the Psy Syndica is actually a very poor criminal alliance choice, and it, I would put this at the very bottom of the list of potential alliances you can make for any alliance whatsoever. I would take Noble House Alliances or Guild Alliances or any other criminal alliance before I even go with the Psy Syndica on that one as well. Now, while having the ability to have a Psyker in your gang is really cool, and getting a gang member to be a Psyker is nice because we have that new game mechanic coming in now later on this edition of Necromunda, the drawbacks are just simply too great the negative the negatives that you would get from this alliance outweighs the positives so because of that it's a it's a problem because that one benefit you do receive when you get the psychic abilities it could potentially break your alliance and not only that but that fighter can die if they break that alliance as well not to mention like we said before the other two previous drawbacks that we talked about with dark dreams and psychonarium attention you could lose two fighters from participating in scenarios even before you even get to the battlefield and those guys might actually get a lasting injury that might cripple them in some way so because of that, in my opinion, there is too much negative for too little benefit to make this alliance. I mean, the weird, the mind locked weird is cool. Don't get me wrong. You could do some really cool things with this fighter. But if you're looking for psychers to use inside of your gangs, you're better off making an alliance with the Noble House of Tai if you're able to. Because we'll talk about those guys too. But House Tai, which came out in the Book of Shadows for the Delac, you could actually get some really good psychers in your gang from making that alliance. 
Or, like I mentioned before, with the Delac. If you want to have a really powerful psychic gang, just play a Delac gang. They got really good access to psychic powers now, especially since the Book of Shadow came out. So because of that, I wouldn't recommend necessarily making an alliance with a Psy Syndicate. If you have the credits, I would suggest just saving up your credits to hire a psychic bounty hunter. That'd probably actually do you a lot better, or any kind of hanger on or brutes that become available later on as more supplements come out. I would actually do that instead because, you know, unless you really, really desperately need one or want one in your gang, it's best just to avoid this in, this uh, alliance entirely. And which is kind of tragic because this, this, uh, this uh, criminal alliance could actually be pretty cool if they had, uh, you know, done certain things differently with it. But that's good to do for those of you guys. This is our overall review of the Criminal Alliance with the Psy Syndica. I highly suggest you avoid. One star would not make a, would not repeat business with those guys. But that's good to do for you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good to do for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.